What's up? This is Hubs Caps, aka Tech Baron, with the High Def Reviews. I've always seen these uh, TV boxes, but kick ass deal, so couldn't pass it up. This one is made by M Tech, and it's not just like a TV entertainment streaming box, it's specifically tailored for gaming. Um, M Tech is a good company, I've heard of them before. Uh, it comes with a Bluetooth Xbox One style controller and uh, the hockey puck really tiny little fucker it's right there right there um, play all your android games it's got google play play store movies games music pictures it can decode just about anything it works great playing movies mpeg 4s it's got four games preloaded from gameloft asphalt 8 uh, my little pony uh, Zoo Explorer and another version of Asphalt, I think. Airborne, yeah. So it's got rating system all over the box, and it's integrated into the uh, the games section too. It tells you if the game's like super violent or whatever. Like right off the bat, it gives you a little E for everyone or whatever in the bottom of the screen. But this is really weird because it's 15 bucks, and I'm curious to see what you can get for 15 bucks. So, it's a mini console, like a whole console, that promises full 1080p HD output for any game. Now, if this can actually pull that off, I'll be really, really surprised, because most TV boxes can barely do 720p. Um, so, you can go to their website and get a media controller or a secondary gamepad or a replacement gamepad. Um, interesting thing is the inside, the, the guts of this thing, the motherboard and the chipset is manufactured by Gigabyte. So if you build computers and buy like MSI motherboards, Gigabyte motherboards, like all that kind of shit, you'll recognize that name. Um, so there's a quad core processor that runs a little bit above 1.5 gigahertz, like 1.583 or some number. Uh, it's Android operating system version 4.4, so it can't run every game in the house, but it runs enough, and it's what I would expect for something of this kind of power. It's not meant to like replace your Xbox One, but it's getting closer to that in terms of realism and good games for the system and shit. Uh, like 3D utilization. You get Ethernet, you got uh, built-in wireless, full uh, HDC port 2.2, high-definition connector, HDMI 2.2, EDR. And then you got uh, power. I know it looks like infrared, but or fiber optic, but it's power. It's uh, nine, uh, 12 volts, 1 amp input, standard. So if you break the power plug it's not like proprietary or anything <clears throat> comes with all the shit power plug a HDMI cable controller console power uh, power adapter thingy for the United States you clip it on there all right so here's the controller um, it's kind of heavy it, feel, it doesn't feel super heavy but it's kind of heavy it's a, it's a little bit smaller than a normal size Xbox controller, I'd say. I just got out of the shower, so I'm all like sweating everything up and shit. Um, but yeah, a really decent center position. Uh, a little bit stronger sticks. Feel almost like uh, Tamiya sticks or uh, something like that. Something really good and not shitty. You know, um, but yeah, these buttons kick ass. They're actually feel right. They feel like they're supposed to. So it's kind of cool. Um, the triggers are digital, and um, they feel good. They feel weighted. Nice spring to them. It's kind of mushy at the very back, but whatever. The actuation is right about there. They're digital, so it can handle acceleration and braking and variations in between. Uh, 
I thought these would be like the side click kind, but they're full press in, which I really, really like, because some of these do that and it fucking sucks. Um, this is just an identifying mark, letting you know that this controller goes to that console. This is a little red dot on the console too, it's just like their M-Tech logo thing, you know. Um, second analog stick feels really good, hella tight, good, good, good for aiming. These, they're just really good, like, they feel like they're supposed to, like a proper Xbox style. Um, you plug this in to a phone charger to charge it, be careful with the charger. Uh, leave this in the center for when you're gaming, because the switch is fragile as fuck, and if you keep switching it off into the game and off to the game, it'll break the switch. Uh, just leave it on, put it down when you're done using it, and the controller will shut itself off in like three minutes. Um, yeah, don't rock that back and forth. The switch is kind of not very high quality. And if you ever have a situation where you need to use a mouse, very gently push that to the right. And you get a cursor for doing things. Because on TV boxes, come on, you just need a cursor sometimes. The keyboard on this thing is weird as fuck. It's doable, it's self explanatory. But it, it's just weird. It's really, really cumbersome. It's inventive. It, it's really, it's new. I've never, I've never seen a type of input like this that was used like this. So, um, see that down there. <coughs> You move your directional pad, the D-pad, back and forth to the shit you want. Like if I want to spell A, B, C, I'd click, move that to there, and then, you know, click the blue, the green, and the red. It's It works, but I thought it was just going to be like a grid of shit, and you just run to it and click the X hella times, and, or whatever, you know, kind of like old school style. But yeah, that's how you enter shit into the console. It's pretty dope. It's responsive. You click this, it supports Gamefly, which is a cloud streaming service, which offloads the actual graphic rendering process to a server somewhere else, which allows this thing to play AAA game titles from Xbox One and PC. got two versions of Asphalt 8. Um, I clicked it by mistake. It's not the fastest thing in the world because it's always updating, it's always doing something. It's an Amelogic chip so it's not gonna be like, you know, like Snapdragon 950 you know, <laughs> you know, this is like very budget processor power. It's the fact that it says 1.5 gigahertz is very misleading. This is more like an 800 to 900 megahertz experience. And uh, the non-code optimization, the older Android, that can be an issue. Um, even the games are labeled by MTech sometimes, which means they're probably optimized for the controller. Um, but yeah, this is really interesting for a $14 price tag. Uh, full 1080p game system with a Bluetooth 2.0 EDR controller, which you can pair to a phone or a tablet as well. Um, you basically can download any game that you play on your phone that you like or whatever on this and play with the controller. Um, the interesting thing is, is because this comes with a, a digital dual stick controller, the fun titles usually are racing games and first person shooters. Emulation is where the system really comes into its own. You can uh, play all the Sega games. You can play Top View R uh, RTS, Real Time Strategy, and RPG games. Side scrolling racing 3D games. This is uh, one of the programs that was included with it. But as a personal recommendation, you should get uh, this program right there. Moopin Plus 
FZ. Movement 64 plus FZ. This is a virtual Nintendo 64 that was coded to run with a compile design architecture which runs good on the ARM chips that these boxes use. So I put all the ROMs that I have on a USB memory stick and I pretty much have every N64 game that I liked and it's pretty fun. <laughs> I like it a lot. It works flawlessly with most uh, games and emulator software. Like it does exactly what you'd want for emulation and gaming retro. Uh, it's a low power device so some games don't work very well but full screen, no borders, uh, screen stretch at 1080 playing N64 upscaled to 1080. It's pretty dope. I mean if you if you remember the output resolution of the N64 was like 6480 by 480 so playing N64 games in a 1080p resolution is almost like a re-release it feels pretty good Dead Trigger 2 good first person shooter that was the other game that came with it and <clears throat> Wonder Zoo Super Retro SNES emulation SNES and then get system task manager with the icon that looks like that and when your box runs like shit you just do that and now it's like uh, killed all the background processes and now it's uh, super responsive and fast so this is a super super lightweight review super lightweight because I didn't even get into that app performance high, high performance games like stuff like that it works it's just the frame rate's not very good but for emulation and stuff oh man I think they're asking a little bit too much of this box at full 1080p um, but the specs um, are pretty good it's an Amalogic ARM V7 chip quad core at 1.58 gigahertz or megahertz or whatever the fuck yeah gigahertz 16 gigabytes of EMMC flash RAM and then one gigabyte of actual system RAM. Um, I want to say that it draws around maybe a, a one watt or two watts at any given time when it's gaming. Super efficient gaming system. I like the fact that it right off the bat comes with a Bluetooth controller because you can do a lot with that. Um, but yeah, pick this up at your local DD's fine retailer. Check it out.